What you're watching is something that we somewhat choreographed and then gave it a couple of tries and this was the third try. And then we tried it one more time after and it just kind of didn't work out. And so this was the best overall clip and it's been run through Real Steady Go. And uh, I've never used Real Steady before, but this is pretty interesting because after this I'll show you the original version and it's quite different. And so I, I didn't even use Real Steady Go this time either. I just sent it to Robert to have him run it. He's the actual creator of Real Steady. Um, he's been working on the software for six years now, a long, long time. He's like one of the original, original FPV pilots, uh, like way, way, way back when, before DJI was around, before anybody was doing anything. He was like one of the original originals. And so he developed the software because he saw the coming age when we would be doing this cinematography with our quads and he expected us to need some sort of stabilization. And so his setups and his rigs are kind of amazing because he does things that are totally different than what you would expect. And he flies in auto level when he does. He usually has a one axis gimbal on there. He takes apart his GoPros and straps them to the quad to get them as light as possible or as small as possible. He does some wild, wild things. Two man operator on like a three inch quad with a gimbal and everything. It's amazing the things that he pulls off and the, the things that he's actually been able to pull off production-wise and for uh, actual jobs. Anyways, so this was an event where we went out with these skaters and they were super cool guys. Uh, all of their their social media stuff is in the description below. Clearly you can see I don't do this very much. So I did this with uh, Tommy Umagod and something I got to say about him, I, I honestly have no idea where he finds the time to do all the stuff that he does because he is a seriously hardworking guy, seriously hardworking, and I don't think enough people uh, appreciate the incredible production quality that this one person is putting out on his own channel at all. I mean, I read some of his comments and he gets like flack for the most ridiculous things. Like I read a comment, somebody's like, your audio level is a little bit too high at six minutes. Are you kidding me? You do all that video and that's what you got from it? The audio level is a little too high at six minutes? You don't realize all the production value that goes into it? So yeah, he's he's super talented, both piloting and um, behind the desk, computer desk editing because that stuff takes a long, long time. Anyways, I want to talk a little bit about what I learned about Real Steady. And obviously my video is not a blog. It's going to be very different because I don't have time to do that kind of editing at all. Uh, he does it very discreetly too. Like you don't even notice when he's recording and when he's not. It just sort of happens. So he's like always working when he's around. Anyways, so I want to share what I learned about real steady and how things work a little bit, and um, how I'm actually changing the way I'm doing things moving forward. Because I do hope to have more sort of jobs like this where it's fun and it's really fun to try and get really interesting shots. So firstly, about real steady. Real Steady is really awesome. It's uh, it's obviously something that allows you to stabilize software, stabilize uh, sorry, shaky footage. Um, the GoPro 7, Hero 7, has it somewhat built in, and they both somewhat do the same thing. However, Real Steady gives you a lot more control. So to use Real Steady optimally, you really need to have uh, really high resolution as well as really high shutter speed, and that's kind of not okay for our quads because that means either using a very light ND filter or no ND filter because the way it works, at least in the most basic sense, is that it compares one frame to another and it looks for changes from frame to frame. So it really wants a flip book of frames. So it wants super high frame rate, it wants super crisp, clear pictures with no blurring in between and that's how it does its best work. It also doesn't like the 69 wide super view stretched picture, it prefers a 4.3 view, which I didn't even know this until Robert told me, that if you put the GoPro in just 4.3 2.7K or whatever GoPro you're using, 4.3 version wide, it's the same as SuperView. SuperView just squashes it down to 69. I mean, I knew that, but I didn't realize that it was a setting in the GoPro to <laughs> do exactly that. So yeah, a lot to be learned. Also, I learned a lot about camera quality. <laughs> so. I haven't used a um, Hero 7, but when I looked at Tommy's footage compared to my footage, I could not believe the incredible leap in quality going from the Session 5 to the Hero 7. Now I do know that the Session 5 has a much smaller sensor on it, and it has some compromised optics and things are compromised, it's just a lower end visual quality setup. 
and the Hero 7 is a much higher end camera, but I just did not appreciate how incredibly vast the quality difference is. Now, when you look at his video, and you should absolutely go check out his video because it's way more fun than my video to watch, but uh, when you look at his video, he did some very nifty editing tricks to make the footage look similar and comparable for YouTube and for you know the output that he's using it for. Uh, but when you look at the raw footage, you just have so much more to work with with the session with the sorry the Hero Seven, and it just reaffirms that all of these Chinese or alternative company HD sports cameras just cannot hold a candle to GoPro. I have no idea what specifically is different about the GoPro cameras that make the quality just so much nicer, but it is genuinely significantly nicer. And I know a lot of people will object and say they love their box or run camp five or whatever. Those cameras do not even begin to compare to this, the, Hero 7, the Hero 7 at all. And in my opinion, the Session 5 is genuinely a lot better than any of those cameras. So enough with that. Let's talk about the actual challenges that we had with this shoot. Now we were at two locations and I didn't really even fly at the first location. I really don't do this stuff often and I didn't bring anything that was particularly safe to fly around people. I mean, I've just brought five inch quads. I didn't have anything else. And the quad that you're looking at, which I know this is kind of a boring video to watch at this point, is the quad that I built specifically for this, this job or this thing, which I, I, it's my cleanest build I've ever done because I actually paid attention to it. Uh, it is using my glide frame with the dead cat arms, which the whole setup and everything is coming out very soon. The dead cat arms will come as well. And I have another little nifty thing that I'll show you. In, in a minute also, but let's talk about the challenges that we had, or at least things that we thought about before going to the shoot. So both Tommy and I, we kind of had the same thoughts. We realized that skaters have been recording themselves forever since the beginning of cameras, and they do a surprisingly good job because they just track each other on a skateboard. And so they can get really close and they can use really wide angle lenses to get really close to the skateboard and they can get some really incredible footage. What can we do that's so different or better in any way than what they're already doing? And so we each came up with things that we wanted to try and do, which neither one of us were able to do because it's, when you get there and do it, it just doesn't work out the way you expect it to. Uh, but yeah, it is genuinely a little bit different and it's, it's really fun to try and get this kind of footage and get this kind of like really nice footage that's, you know, third person of an action that's happening, whether it be skateboarding, bike riding, cars, whatever it's happening. It's cool to be able to capture the footage in this way. And Real Study is an, it's an integral part of making this footage usable as well, which I also didn't mention that Real Study doesn't like sharp movements. It likes very slow wobbly movements which I'll get to later on in this video at the end because it's a little bit of a somewhat secret that I'm not really a secret but something that I'm going to be working on and testing and building into my cinematic frame designs which I've been working on for a while now so it was it was really a struggle to number one learn and understand how they move I mean we're, but we've both seen skateboarding a whole lot. I mean, I, I, I've watched it a lot. I'm sure he's watched it a lot as well. Uh, we've never thought about filming it, but we have both seen what they can do. They can do some pretty incredible things. And so it took us a while to just kind of get a feel for the way they do the things that they do and how to track them and how to work with them rather than uh, some... like. It, it's it's sort of like playing jazz, I would say. Not that I play jazz, but it's sort of like playing jazz where you gotta watch one person play and then kind of feed off how they do it. And so it's really fun to feed off that because it's like you're in this whole flow state where you're just like, okay, they're doing this, I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna go there. And now you try to anticipate what you expect them to do, and then you try and pull off what you're trying to it's just it's a lot of fun to do. It's a whole level above just FPV piloting. And I know this is nothing new that I'm talking about. This is stuff that lots of people do. Tracking cars and doing all this stuff, it's like become normal in FPV. But it's actually genuinely really difficult to get good footage and get good things to work out when you're doing this kind of stuff. Anyways, the quad that you're looking at, I was primarily, I only build success quads. I don't build 4S quads ever, 
ever. I just don't. I just don't build 4S. I don't even have any 4S batteries. I got no 4S batteries. Left. Actually, that's not true. That's a total lie. I don't have any high performance 4S batteries left. They're all super duper shot. So what you're looking at is a quad that's 6S that I primarily ran on 4S for the entire entirety of the shoot. And that's because 4S is just so much easier to control in the like you just can't make it's hard to make a mistake on the throttle whereas with 6s you just touch the throttle and you're off to the moons <laughs> so at the end i did kind of pull out a 6s pack but i knocked my throttle limit down to 60 on the controller like way down and the, th the controller is a, a, a 200 point scale so going down to 60 was really just knocking down 30 off the top so i really just went down to 70 percent throttle limit total throttle limit and um yeah, and that helped out a lot, and it really made 6S just feel like 4S, and that's what made kind of all of it possible for me to do, because I just don't do this kind of shooting very often. Uh, of course, if you have kind of this skill, and you've been flying for a while, it's not a stretch to do this kind of stuff, but it does take some thought, it does take some effort, it does take just some, some effort on your part to be able to pull off what you want to do. Anyways... The Dead Cat style arms worked out perfectly. Um, you can see that my camera angle here is probably below 20 degrees, and that was a struggle with these things, is to fly as slow as possible. And so, again, another thing I'm building into my cinematic platforms, which I have been testing and working on a lot lately, so this was a very helpful kind of event to go through and learn from. And I did have one other quad that I set up, which is kind of a revision of this of my glide frame. I put the dad cat arms on the back. <laughs> Another thing we didn't realize is that these skateboarders are actual athletes, so they get tired. They can't go forever, so we need to kind of give them a break and wait for them rather than them waiting for us, which is usually what's happening because we're usually filming motorsports and other things where it doesn't take constant athletic ability to pull off. And these guys get, I mean, they work hard at what they do. They're awesome at what they do, but they work hard at it. Anyways, I had this set up as a follow quad. I put the dead cat arms in the back. I strapped a uh, GoPro mount to the bottom here, and I wanted it to be a forward following and then, or a, be the, the leader, and then the skateboarder follow me, and then Tommy follows the skateboarder from behind, so we get multiple perspectives. Now, we kind of gave up in the day because it came a little bit late, skateboarders got tired, and we just sort of gave up. I gave it one shot, and then I didn't realize that I only screwed down one screw on my motor, so then my motor fell off in flight, and that was the end of my follow. But I will play some some regular just flying around footage for you with this quad, which I think I've already been playing. And you can see what it looks like uh, right here where I'm flying. There are animals eating my legs, bugs eating my legs, so I'm just kind of like jumping around while I'm flying. And so, yeah, it's a nifty little quad. I'm going to keep this set up as is because I do think that follow footage, I mean, I didn't even think about it, but now that I, I was able to pull it off and it worked out, I'm actually going to change the design of the top plate a little bit to um, allow for the battery to be scrapped up front as well as in the back as it is. So I'm just going to put a third battery slot up front in the next batch of the glide frames. The first batch is coming, uh, I think, next week, maybe the Monday of the week after. And so, yeah, this is a cool little nifty setup. The cinematic setups that I'm working on, the first one that I'm working on is the 6-inch and 7-inch setup. The 5-inch version will come, and it's going to look pretty different. Uh, I'm going to attempt to keep the arms as, as much the same as I can, but most likely the frame will be totally new because I'll, I'll have to change up a lot of things. It is really genuinely pretty nifty. The last thing that I said I was going to talk about was how to optimize real steady, which is again what Robert told me. And uh, if I mean, real steady go is something that a lot of people are using now, and it works really remarkably well for what we do. So, real steady doesn't like jerky movements. It well, any kind of stabilization software doesn't like jerky movements, it likes smooth, flowing movements. It doesn't want anything to move jarringly or fast in any way and you can see you saw originally in the video somewhere in the middle I kind of touched the floor or something and it got a little jolt and that was a little shake in the video and that's because it was a jarring movement so you want to 
kind of reduce the frequency of the oscillations or movements in the quad. So if you remember, I'm not going to put any pictures up on screen because I'm, I really don't have time to edit very much. But if you've been around a while, you know that, or even now today, there are platforms that hang cameras off cinematic drones, whatever, like the movie drones, and they often use this kind of wire mechanism to hang the camera because someone a long time ago randomly found out that just steel cable wrapped around itself works phenomenally well at isolating vibrations, especially on camera platforms. So using that same concept, we can use zip ties to kind of float the camera on top of the quad. And so what might result is that when you do a roll, the camera gets a little wobble in the roll, but that's okay. Real Steady can very easily compensate for that because the, the movement is not jarring. Yes, it might be a quick movement, but as long as there isn't blurring in the frames, Real Steady can compensate for it because it'll just kind of compress and wobble back and forth, and that's okay because there are low frequency oscillations or wobbles or movements and Real Steady can actually process it. Now, I haven't tested this. I'm in the process of building my new computer, which I have to wait for a um, BIOS update kit from AMD because ASUS loves not updating any of their BIOS on any of their motherboards. I hope this video was interesting. I know uh, my production value of it is incredibly low compared to Tommy's and I'm going to try and work on that but it's, it's a time investment thing. I just literally don't have the time to sit there and number one, learn it all, which wouldn't take all that much time, but number two, the stuff really does take a lot of time. Tommy is really good at it. He's been doing it a while and he is an artist in the entirety of the sense. And so, yeah, I'll try to make better on that. But I, I do hope to have more kind of jobs like this and things like this to capture. And I, I think I definitely need to pick up a Hero 7 if I'm going to be doing this stuff more often. Because the Session 5 just will not cut it. Anyways, take care. Floss your teeth. Bye-bye.